Uh, the swim itself, the first 50 wasn't as fast as it should have been. So um, I still don't know today how, but I came back faster than ever before, and it was a world record. And great elation, hope to break it again in the evening, but with all the commotion post world record and, and the excitement of it, you know, swimming is a, a sport where you need to be relaxed and find the rhythm because if mm. you tense up and try a little bit too hard, you miss it, which is typically what happened. Um, for quite a few of my initial world records mm. um, until later in my career. And then uh, that day at, at the 96 in Atlanta, 96 Olympics in Atlanta, the two, how far apart were the two races, the two um, finals? I think it was about two days apart. Those mm. years we still swam heats and finals. Mm. You know, now you have heat, semi-final and the final the following, following evening. Um, I had visualized that race for three months prior to the Olympics. Knowing that in Barcelona I was so overwhelmed by everything, I knew going into Atlanta I can't allow myself to feel, wow, this is the Olympics. I mm. have to consider it, it's just another event. Same race, same people I've swum over, you know, against over the last few years. And so I visualized the race, all the details of it, over a hundred times. So by the time I actually swam the race, it was the heats of the 100 breaststroke. It was a matter of just letting my body do what my mind had already done. And uh, it was really a sense of, I can't wait to swim. I expected the other girls would be faster as well. As it turned out, they weren't as fast as I thought. So I knew going into the final, I'm safe. If I swim a 90% race, I could win. 100%, I could get my record again. As it turned out, it was only 90%. <laughs> Make some mistakes in the final. Yeah. 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 And when you realized the magnitude of this, that you'd been the first women, woman to do this, um, can you remember that? Or was it I don't all think I knew emotional? until quite a bit later. You know, I, I know after being the second gold, I kind of knew a little more what to expect on the podium and to take my time walking around, you know, because they have TV on and they have ushers there rushing you along and everybody else is prepared and take their time. And I was this good little girl following the ushers. And I really, on the first gold medal, didn't enjoy it that much. I just went through the motions. Um, there's a South African hospitality area usually at the Olympic Games and post medal presentations and stuff we went over there and all the media it was just a frenzy and I didn't really know I just went with the flow and I don't think South Africa knew what to do with me so in a sense we were kind of pioneering um, the way forward I was very very fortunate that I not by my own doing but um, had the right people around me from the very start mm -hmm. one of them being Zelda van Vieren my manager at the time now business partner and if you don't and this is what I see with the guys today if you don't have the right people around you, you're so young, the fame and relative money today, it's more, it really just, I suppose, could go to your head mm -hmm. and you're tugged in every direction and everyone wants to celebrate and it could lead to party upon party and I think uh, maybe guys are a little safer than girls. But uh, like I say, I was really protected and I think that allowed me to continue and have longevity in my career. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I think it might have unraveled post-96.